So what I'm going to be doing is just um, sharing with you some of the circulating ideas on, on what is a health system and, and how to represent all of these ideas in, in one place. So starting with the definition um, of what is a health system, so it's defined by WHO in its WHO, in that report, the report that laid out all the building blocks, as consisting of all organizations, so structures within systems, collectives, people, quite a key idea, and actions, what they do, whose primary intent is to promote, restore, maintain health. And those are, are some of the key things we need to look at. Okay. in health systems and in policy and implementation. You're all now clearly very familiar with this picture. Is there anyone who hasn't seen this picture in the group? No. All right. So this is a, a, a very, WHO's very influential report, actually, in 2007, which was preceded by a report in 2000 that started to try and lay out um, some of these relationships, talking about the building blocks, the inputs, and often when people describe a health system, lay, uh, lay people, when they describe a health system, they'll talk about the health facilities and the people in them. They won't think about all the inputs that go into running those facilities. And so what this um, framework does, foreground very strongly, is the notion of, of all these different health system inputs. Um, leadership, governance, financing, medical products, information, health workforce, producing access, coverage, quality, safety, okay, and then achieving a set of goals which um, includes improved health, uh, both the average level but also um, an, an equitable um, set of outcomes around health. So it's not okay if the average is good if that masks very, very wide disparities. So the notion of equity being there. Responsiveness, okay, so does it um, speak to the needs and expectations um, and norms and values that the people, communities and users bring to the system? Is it responsive to, to their needs and, and what they would like from a system? Um, so social and financial risk protection, so people use those words so that it doesn't render you bankrupt if you have a, a serious illness in your family. Um, a big, big element of all of the current debates around universal health coverage. And then efficiency people also spoke about. So um, health needs are bottomless pit, doesn't matter how industrialized or, or wealthy your society is, there will always be not enough resources for health. There will always be new technologies. And, and so making sure that the resources that are used, they are, are used in the most effective, evidence-based way, clearly is quite important. All right, so the health system ideas that you've also raised, um, health goes beyond the notion of, of care and cure and sickness. Oops. Um, it includes mental and physical health and social well-being. Uh, and it's beyond the individual um, to include all the elements producing health, all the different players in the health sector. It's both domestic and international. And then this idea of a complex adaptive system is quite key, all right? And in your reading, uh, in your reading pack for today is an article that talks quite critically about the WHO framework. Um, as being not representing complexity, as being too simplistic, actually. And actually, if you said to a Martian, this is a health system, and they went and tried and engaged with that health system, they wouldn't recognize what was there on paper. It would be something totally different. And that's because we're talking about a complex adaptive system. A health system um, is, consists of multiple different elements. If you think of the range of actors involved, professionals, managers, patients, um, producers of drugs, financiers. It's a very complex set of actors. It's a very complex set of institutions, from tertiary hospitals to primary healthcare facilities, okay, doing a very wide range of, of 
technical acts. So that is typically what a complex system does. It's just got multiple elements and it is much more than the sum of just the sum of those parts. So um, tomorrow you're going to look at an article written by one of the alumni from, from this faculty um, that looks at the notion of complex, how you model and how you represent those complex set of relationships that exist in all sorts of, of feedback loops okay, and that produce um, a lot of unpredictable effects. So you put um, a new program, Mum Connect, you've got Mum Connect in this country, that M Health around maternal health. M -health yeah. You've got, yeah. So you put in an M Health application in a country with one billion people and how many states? 30 or odd, yeah. Yeah. Um, each with their own governments with a huge diversity of the communities that are being served, you put in that idea, what comes out the end is not what's written on that paper. You can be sure it's going to be completely changed and in ways that are quite unpredictable. So in some places you'll find it working, in others it won't. It won't work for long periods of time and then suddenly the whole country adopts it. So non-linear phase transitions, those are all features of what we call a, a complex adaptive system. And that's a key idea in, in thinking about health systems. Health systems are also influenced by history. Uh, they're what we call path dependent. So where you started has a strong bearing on where you are now. It doesn't determine it completely, but it shapes it. Okay. Um, it's self-organizing. And it's like a very, very big ship. You know, that's a huge steamer that's on this course. And to turn that around is actually quite a complex task. So it's, change is not easy in systems, um, but sometimes it happens totally dramatically. Um, so that is, what do you see there? What is that? It's flux. Can you put your mics on so others, can your classmates can hear you? Did you all hear what Ashwini Fl said? It's a flock of birds flying in a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> And then what happens to, yeah, the pattern changes. Yeah, pattern keeps changing. They have a dance kind of movement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's seen in like UK, those areas. I, 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 so that's, that's a bit like a health system is. It's got a pattern. It's self-organizing. But, you know, each, so each of those little dots could be a health worker in that system or a manager or someone. And they're all moving in this complex system. Um, in this dynamic that that has some sense to it, but is hard to describe, really. Okay, so if you think of a health system as as that kind of idea, not as beautiful always, of course. All right, so this is one advance, if you like, on the WHO building blocks model, and it's been quite popular. I don't know if you've seen the Van Ullman model um, in. In, it was in 2010, so a few years after the WHO framework, that sought to, it said all of those building blocks is too linear, actually. Um, it doesn't, for example, represent service delivery. So you've all spoken heavily about structures of service delivery. And to put that just as one building block next to information doesn't make sense, actually, as a way of thinking about systems. So they rethought it and said, okay, service delivery is at, in central, what WHO doesn't do is talk about users' population. It doesn't talk about that interface. And so they talk about populations, about social context that starts to bring in other sectors and ideas. They put leadership and governance as quite a key function in those systems, as the oversight function that really determines these are the resources, the building blocks, infrastructure, human resources that uh, produce outcomes um, and universal act coverage, quality, responsiveness, and then the ultimate goals. And then what they added is the notion of values and principles, that, that, um, that health systems express norms and values and cultures, and they are not neutral and technical processes. They tell you something about what the system values, as what how it values citizens and users. Um, and those are its values and principles. So if um, a value would be universal health coverage, for example, 
or um, a value could be health care as a right, not as a privilege. Okay? That's a fundamental distinction. So the American health system has tried through Obamacare to make health care a right, but it's been, so far it's not a right. Okay? You have to um, pay for it and a lot of people get excluded from it. Um, in this country, I think the notion is of health care as a right, although that right isn't necessarily realized in practice. Just interrupt me, okay, if you have any questions. This is another representation of the WHO building blocks that tries to, to represent something of the complexity of interactions. So it's saying here are all your building blocks. Um, you want to achieve a goal, and they're looking at a particular intervention, pay for performance. Is that a reform you've had? Have you had, you haven't had that kind of financing reform? The terminology is not uh, familiar. Okay. So pay for performance is where um, you would give um, the ashes money to bring someone to come and deliver at the health facility. It's a financial incentive for, for acts of... Well, yeah. 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 So if in your health facility your, um, you manage to um, achieve a 90% coverage of antenatal care in your community, you may get rewarded financially. That's paid for performance. And you can either be as a unit, as an organization, or as an individual. Okay. So that's... We've had paid for performance for family planning for a very long time. Yeah. Rewarding hospitals for yeah. uh, meeting targets, rewarding district levels, and so on. But the terminology is not yeah. great. Okay. So it's, it's the use of financial incentives. So what happens when you introduce financial incentives into a system, um, obviously it's trying to influence the behavior of people and what they do in that system. And it works in very, very complex ways. And what this diagram shows is that there are some negatives here. Okay, Coverage isn't, it's plus minus. It may um, have some negative impacts on in a number of different places where if you give money for certain acts other acts for example won't be done all right it directs people's behavior and what this model does is try to to represent the complexity of trying to put something like a financial incentive in a system in that flock of birds and its unpredictable effects and how to think about that so what this also does is put people at the center. Right. So that's one of the fundamental distinctions between people who talk about the health system, is those who see it as a bit of a machine, building blocks, structures, financing, money, people, um, electronic registers, information systems. Okay, so that kind of view of systems as, a, as building blocks in a house, if you like, and people who view the system as a social system. Okay? So the system, 80% of, of resources, somewhere around there, 70, 80, maybe between 60 and 80, of expenditure in the health system goes on people. A health system is a people system, it's a social system. And those people are spread throughout. They're not all sitting in a factory floor where you can watch them. Okay? They are involved in multiple thousands of transactions every day. Managers don't observe those individual transactions. They don't control them. Mm -hmm. And actually what happens at the coalface between the patient and the provider is often a mystery. Okay. It's, a, it's governed by the individual, who they are. It's governed by the social system they're in, their values. It's governed by how they manage. It's governed by a whole set of, of factors um, that make it an unpredictable system. Okay, social systems are complex adaptive systems. And when you think of the system in that kind of way, you start to then think about it in quite different ways to a building blocks approach. And maybe the woman from Mars may relate more to the idea of health systems as essentially systems that have people at the center, whether they're providers, patients, managers, and other players. Those people have different kinds of power. They have different kinds of interest to direct how the flock is flying. Right. 
and that actually one representation of a system is to put all those building blocks around the people. Okay. So that's one new way of representing the WHO building blocks. It's the multiple relations and interactions um, amongst the building blocks that convert these into a system. All right, so that's, that's one set of, of ways of, of advancing, if you like, the, the building blocks idea. Then one of the, oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, one of the other ways of thinking about systems, which I alluded to earlier, was to think about it at a macro level, a meso, and a micro level. So a macro level would be the global and national context, what happens there, the overall organization, what happens in Delhi, the ministry, what it thinks about the overall design of the system and how that's done that over many, many years. That interacts with the whole set of global and international forces. So UHC is the big global mantra. India, South Africa, everyone is adopting that language, very strongly influenced by global context. And then you've got... Um, your, within your domestic health system, you've got the individual organizations, the hospitals, the clinics, the national health resource centers, the governance structures, all the different organizational elements within that system. So that would be referred to as the meso level of a system when you look at a unit, for example, a district health system or a block. Um, that would be referred to as the meso level. And then the micro level is when we look at individual interactions between actors. So the actors between providers, the re relationships between providers and patients, providers and managers, health managers and the policy elites, health managers and systems, each of these relationships can be examined in a system and that would be called the micro level perspective. All right. Um, because the health system is a social and peopled system that not only has building blocks, but has people acting in all sorts of diverse ways in that system, it's now been co become quite common to refer to a system as having hardware and a system as having software. Okay, the hardware would be the human resources, financing, organizational structure, all the things you've re represented. And the software would be the ideas and interests, relationships and power, values and norms, all of those um, acting in a dynamic, acting in relation to each other. It's not one or the other. It's them, those two in interactions. So if you don't pay your health workers, of course they will behave in certain kinds of ways. They may not express the professional norms that they would like to express. So it's not one or the other. It's them in, in concert and influenced by the policy environment, all of that existing in the social and political context. Okay. Um, that's influenced by an interactions international, national, subnational, and local. Right. So that's another representation of the health system. Um, oh, okay. These are coming. So that. Um, so these are my slides on auto forward. I didn't realise that actually. So that what you would look at in each of the building blocks and the people. I think we've spoken about that already. And what um, this framework um, is going to be what you look at your, when you study the articles, when you read the articles over the next few days, you're going to have this template and try and map what the article says about each of those different elements or which elements it's addressing. And you'll also have the hardware, software and, and try and map what the research is doing in that framework. All right, so if health systems are people's system, how one thinks about people in systems is absolutely vital and central. And actually, a lot of what people do is invisible. What's in their minds, their mindsets, their cultures, their values is not something you can observe that easily. Um, and so people have developed theories. There's a, a whole lot of theoretical traditions about how to view people in systems that can be s simplified in three basic views on people in systems. The one is the notion of a machine perspective, a little bit like the building blocks, that actually the organization has all its parts, its components, a very rational linear structure starting from the bottom to the top. Uh, people fit into those clearly defined working parts together 
um, and that people are compliant. They'll do what you ask them to do. Patients, providers, managers. If you send the standard operating procedure from head office, they will then proceed to implement it. Okay. Um, and so that's the notion of formal re rules and uh, procedures, formal accountability mechanisms, um, laws, regulations, ways of shaping the behavior of people is through rules um, and sanctions if you don't, usually, not always, sanctions if you don't apply the rules. So it's a view of human beings as naturally compliant, wanting to, to do the right thing. Where I come from, that theory just falls down very quickly, actually, in a society that is very rebellious and anti-authoritarian. Um, another view of it is that actually um, we're all um, individual economic actors and our, and our goal in life is to maximize our position in the world. We want to advance, we want to be promoted, we want to, to learn more, uh, we want to grow, we want to be fulfilled. We're self-maximizing individuals. Okay, so that's the individual economic actor. Um, and that we exist in competition with others who also want those resources. Um, that human beings are therefore calculating um, individualist and motivated by self-interest. Okay. And you know, ec economists would say that's not a bad thing. That's how you, that's how you get growth. That's entrepreneurship, actually. Um, so what you would do then is competition, financial incentives, pay for performance, fits within that paradigm. Ash is getting money to take someone to a health facility to develop, fits within that notion of human beings in the system. And then the third one is, is people as socio-cultural beings, okay? That they reflect a response of people forming a com complex social system. So I may want to extract informal fees from patients coming to a facility, but if everyone around me frowns upon that behavior, and it's not regarded as a socially acceptable thing to do in the community, for sure I'm not gonna do it, okay? So we're socio-cultural beings, we're influenced by the social norms around us, and we'll do what's regarded as socially acceptable. So, um, and so be human behavior is influenced not by what me as an individual divorced from everyone else thinks. It's influenced by social networks and relationships. So norms, values, trust, and shared meanings is what drives behavior. So if you want to shape a health system, you work at that. You work at that, which is more complex, more long-term, but you work at, at developing the norms, values, ideas. So basically, um, that could be regarded as the stick approach. That could be regarded as stick, carrot. You heard of that, stick, carrot, and what would that be called? Hug, hug. <laughs> Some people call it the stick carrot hug approach to thinking about health systems. But where you stand along here, and most people would say it's all of it together. Okay, I mean let's you know accept that you need all of it together in some way or another. But your fundamental orientation will be along that. Okay, how are we doing for time? All right, so how you think about people and how you view systems as technical machines or as complex adaptive systems will have a big bearing on how you think about change in those systems. All right, so this is a very well-known review by Trish Greenholge and colleagues who did a huge um, systematic review looking at the notion of spread of innovations in organizations. You may have seen this paper, I can have, it's freely available, open access, a really, really interesting paper. They looked at all, about 13 different disciplinary traditions that work with the notion of innovation and change in the system. So if you want to shape the behavior of all of those actors in the system, how do you think about, how do you think about that? and summarized it in this overall framework in their paper, um, which is really uh, you, by these um, metaphors, if you like, of making it happen, so forcing it, links to which perspective of human beings do you think? Okay. Help it happen. 
maybe it could be the financial or the socio-cultural, the economic. Let it happen. Social, it could also be introduced, there may be a fourth column there, as human beings is a bit unpredictable, okay, as in social. So that's, that's, that's how people who think about complexity talk about change in systems, let it happen. Okay, let it emerge. It's the notion of emergence. Um, systems are self-organizing. They emerge, and your job as someone trying to shape those systems is to support emergence where it's directed towards the goals of the organization. Right. So defining features, scientific, orderly, planned, regulated programs, systems that are properly managed, a focus on, on management systems, Okay, at all different levels, accountability systems. Some people talk about that as re-engineering of systems. So it is a, a machine metaphor, it's not a life metaphor, it's not revitalization, it's engineering. It's a notion of a system as having parts like a car. So you would be a mechanic of that system. So it's managerial, so re-engineering where you, in Delhi the decisions are made about what's going to happen to a very complex system over 29 states and you then spread the innovation through dissemination and cascading. You train people at all the different levels. A metaphor for spread of the, so then technical and social would be more around the financial incentives, the social mechanisms, so knowledge transfer, so give people an understanding of what's required, of evidence-based guidelines, for example, train them negotiate um, diffusion, so allow players to take it up through the system. And then this would be on the other end, emergence adaptation, knowledge construction, making sense. Um, and it's a very bottom-up view of the system, is a system's dynamic is what happens at the base of the system. So I, the, where I am based and where I work, our research is very strongly focused on thinking about the dynamic of systems as, as actually what happens at the bottom of those systems, at the front line. And that really defines what that system is. Um, even though governance actions are quite important um, at the top of the system, but it needs to under work very fundamentally with, with an understanding of what is at the base. And that would be an, a, a strong focus on emergence and adaptation how you understand changing systems. So that's it. That's a quick primer on ways of thinking about a health system. And we're quite well on time. Um, I've spoken enough, so let's get some questions, ideas, thoughts.